In the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful, praise be to Allah, God Almighty, Lord and Cheerter of the world. And may God send His peace and blessings upon Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and those who rightly follow him until the Day of Judgment. Amen. Whoever is asleep about what's going on in the Middle East, in Iraq and Syria, has to wake up. Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, Prophet Muhammad said this, peace be upon him. He said, in the end of time, all of the nations are going to gather together to pounce on you, to pound on you, to destroy you. To destroy who? The Muslims. Who is being attacked right now? Muslims. Who is doing the attacking? America and its allies. From the prophecy of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, isn't it, uh, isn't it a prophecy in the making? Who's being attacked right now? Iraq, Syria, Afghanistan prior to that, uh, Yemen, Pakistan, Palestine, and the list goes on and on. All of them are being attacked. All of them are being attacked. Muhammad said the nations will gather together to destroy you, to pounce on you, attack you. Who is attacking these Muslim countries? America and its allies. And if Muhammad, peace be upon him, said these words, then what should a Muslim stance be on America and its allies regarding the so-called war on terror? Regarding the so-called war on terror. So what should America, what should a Muslim's response be? He should not support America and her allies. He should not uh, be loyal America and her allies. He should not befriend America, the government, and her allies, the governments. Don't be loyal to them. Don't befriend them. Don't take them as allies. Don't take them as supporters. When you take them as an ally, you become a disbeliever. It's that simple. When you take them as allies, you become a disbeliever. You have left the fold of Islam and you become a disbeliever. What's the solution? Do not take the the kuffar, the Jews, the Christians, uh, their allies. Do not take them as allies, the Jews, Christians, and the non-Muslims. Give them their rights. Respect them. Do unto them as they would do unto you. As long as they don't cheat you, do not cheat them. They respect you, respect them. They, uh, they're kind to you, be kind to them. Give them their rights. Don't injure them, don't attack them, don't oppress them. Don't uh, be cruel, don't be harsh, be kind, be just, be equitable, be, uh, be fair with them, don't be uh, rude with them, you know, be, be on an exalted form of good character, but do not take them as allies and protectors. Allah says in chapter 5 verse 51, O ye who believe, O Muslims, do not take the Jews and Christians as allies. They are allies of one another. And whoever among you takes them as allies, you have become of them. You have joined their ranks. You have left the fold of Islam and you become a disbeliever just by taking them as allies. A lot of the Muslim scholars lie and they say no. That's only the combatant. That's only the combatant ones among them. Only them we can take as allies. The other one we can take as allies and friends. That is given a lie to Allah. That is given a lie to Allah. Allah did not say combatant. He said, do not take them as allies. He didn't say the combatant ones among them. He said them, meaning all of them. The modern day scholars say, no, only the combatant ones we can take as allies. The rest of them we can take as allies. I say, you are lying about Allah and His Messenger. Allah says in chapter 58, verse 22, you will not find any people who believe in Allah in the last day, meaning the Muslims. You will not find any Muslims loving those who reject Allah and His Messenger, those who oppose Allah and His Messenger, peace be upon Him, those who hate Allah and His Messenger, who opposes Allah and His Messenger, the non-Muslims. They reject Him, they oppose Him, they hate Him. So, just by them rejecting Allah and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon Him, God says, for that reason, do not love them. Chapter 58, verse 22. In chapter 9 of the Holy Quran, 
God says, do not take your fathers or your brothers and basically means your family as well, your relatives as well. Do not take them as protectors, as allies, as friends. If they prefer disbelief, whether it's Judaism, Hinduism, Christianity, everyism. If they just prefer disbelief over faith. If they just prefer disbelief over faith, over Islam, do not take them as friends. And that's in chapter 9 of the Holy Quran. Imagine that. If they just prefer, not if they fight you, not if they attack you, no. If they just prefer disbelief, any religion, over Islam, over faith, over Iman, over Islam. Just by doing that, do not take them as friends. Allah says uh, in chapter 5 of the Holy Quran, most certainly your protecting friends are Allah. I think it's chapter 5 verse 55 or verse 55 or verse 56, chapter 5. Allah says, your protecting friends are Allah and the messenger and the true believing Muslims. Those who believe in Allah and his messenger and they, they establish the prayer and they establish a charity and they bow down in prayer with those who bow down. These are the ones. These are your true protecting friends. Allah says these are your allies. Allah and His Messenger and the true believing Muslims. Where are you going to listen to? Okay. Now, a lot of people say, but my non-Muslim friend, he's a good person. He's good with me and I'm good with him. He is kind-hearted. You want me to hate him? I said, yes, hate him because Allah told you to hate him. But, but, just because you hate him, do not injure him. Still be kind. Still be just. You're allowed to be kind and just. You're even allowed to give him a gift to bring him closer to, uh, closer to Islam. But your heart has to despise him because of his infidelity. Your heart has to despise him because of his infidelity. Now you might say, how is that possible? i give you an example. Someone hates your mother. Would you find it easy to like that person? Someone hates your mother. Would it be easy for you to hate that person since he hates your mother? The answer is yes. So, someone hates Islam. They hate Allah. They hate Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him. Then shouldn't you hate them because of that? Now you might say, well, they don't know Islam and that's why they hate it. Explain to your good Muslim, the non-Muslim friend, explain to him Islam, don't wait, explain to him Islam and see how much he likes it. A lot of these Muslims who say, my non-Muslim friend, he likes Islam, you keep forgetting. He likes Islam because you're not teaching him what Islam says. Tell him Islam allows up to four wives if you are just. Tell him Islam says, the whole world should be ruled by Islamic law. Tell, and that's what Islam says. Tell him Islam says that uh, no one goes to heaven except if you're a Muslim and a, and a good Muslim, a practicing Muslim, not a munafik, who's a complete munafik. Tell him Islam says that uh, Islam is superior over all, all other religions. Tell him that... Um, Islam, what's it called, um, you know, doesn't allow riba, alcohol, usury, drugs, sex before marriage. Islam doesn't allow that. Then see how much he likes Islam. He'll be cursing it left and right. So once you teach him Islam the way it should be taught, he is going to hate you and your religion. Which is why Allah says in chapter 60, verse 4, that Prophet Abraham, peace be upon him, told his people, we reject you and what you worship. And hatred and animosity has appeared between us and you from now until the day of judgment. Until what? Until you believe in Allah. Chapter 60, verse 4. Hatred and animosity has appeared between us and you. The same good, the same non-Muslims that you say that they're good, most of them stay quiet as the American regime bombs Muslim countries. They stay quiet as the American regime bombs Muslim countries. 
So by them staying quiet and accepting it in their heart and they don't hate it, they don't try to change it, it makes them no better than the American regime who's bombing Muslim countries. So how can you like a non-Muslim who accepts in his heart what the American regime is doing? Now, a lot of Muslims say, but my non-Muslim friend hates the American regime for what they're doing. But once you teach them the true Islam, they're going to hate you and Islam. Trust me. Once you teach them the true Islam, they're going to hate you and Islam. With a great passion. Thank you and have a great day.